Are you ready for an adventure? A very special adventure. Then let's begin. Make sure you are nice and comfortable. Close your eyes and relax. Take a deep breath in and slowly breathe out. Deep breath in and slowly breathe out. One more time. Deep breath in and slowly breathe out. Now imagine that it's Christmas Eve and you are very excited. You are tucked up in your warm and cosy bed. And there is a nightlight giving a lovely warm glow to the room. It's been snowing all day and it's still snowing now. And you know that when you get up in the morning there will be a beautiful fresh white blanket covering all that you see. A beautiful blanket of snow. Whilst you are lying there, thinking your lovely thoughts, you hear a strange jingly sound and it's coming from outside of your window. So you listen even harder. You can't identify it at first, but you kind of think it sounds like, well, like sleigh bells. Sleigh bells? softly tinkling outside your window. It can't be. Can it be? Really? Can you hear the sleigh bells? How exciting! So you get up and you look out of the window and just a few feet away from you, hovering in the air is a very large, empty sleigh. You are flabbergasted. As you look at the sleigh, you realise that there are very large reindeers tethered to it. Lots of them. And you look to see if the first one has a red nose. But you're not sure but you do see a lot of very happy reindeer. And it kind of looks like the first one is smiling too. You take a good long look, wondering if what you are seeing is, is well, is it really there? Well, yes, it is. It is really there. One of the reindeer speaks to you and your mouth drops open. Well, in shock really. A talking reindeer. Surely that's not possible. Yes, it is possible. He tells you that he has been asked by someone special to bring you to them. They have been asked to collect you and take you to the North Pole. The North Pole. Well, we all know who lives there, don't we? You are so excited that you cannot speak. You just giggle a lot. You climb aboard the beautiful red and gold sleigh and get comfortable. There is even a big, thick, soft, 
fluffy blanket to cover you with and keep you nice and warm. And you're going to need it too, as it is very cold where you are going. The reindeer start to move, and you find that the sleigh is moving very quickly as you begin your journey over the rooftops. You're flying high, and you can see all of the chimney pots on the rooftops as you glide past them. You can see over all of the trees and tall buildings too. You look down at the town, seeing it completely covered with snow, and it looks delightful. You can see all the lights shining brightly in the windows, making the town look so peaceful and all of the houses so warm and inviting. Have a look, see what else you can see from way up here. You fly over the snowy lands and it looks so clean and so fresh. And you fly over a magnificent snow-covered forest. The trees are all shiny and sparkling and their branches are heavy with snow. The reindeer begin to slow down and you find yourself landing in the magical snowy forest. The reindeer are now trotting on the ground, pulling the heavy sleigh behind them. You look all around you as you ride through the forest. Now and again, seeing a small animal peeking out from behind the trees and then dashing back to the safety of their woodland home. Seeing the amazing birds overhead as they fly from branch to branch. It's so beautiful here, so magical, so peaceful. The snow is still falling like tiny flower petals just floating slowly down from the sky. The forest now opens up into a big clearing. And you can see a big pathway, big enough for the reindeer to pull the sleigh on. At the end of the pathway sits a lovely old wooden house with a warm, cosy glow coming from the windows. 
and there is smoke floating out of the chimney too. Set back behind the house, you can just see a very large workshop with fairy lights glittering all over it. It's so sparkly and so bright. The reindeer bring the sleigh to a halt just outside the glittering workshop. And you see an elf has come out from the workshop to greet you. And he has the biggest smile on his face. He asks you to come inside out of the cold and offers to show you around the workshop to see how things are made. You see that there are many, many elves all working away on various things, all magical things. There are so many different toys in all colours and sizes. There are cars and dolls. There are games and puzzles. There are cuddly teddy bears and bikes and so many, many more toys. And you are so happy to be here, to be in Santa's workshop with the wonderful elves. There is a huge candy cane workshop as well, where you can even eat the furniture if you want to. But you decide not to do that, otherwise the elves would have nowhere to sit now, would they? You see a chocolate workshop too. It's the place where all the lovely sweeties are made. There is also a special chocolate that doesn't melt. Wow! Inside the chocolate workshop is a big chest filled with sweets that never go down. The big chest never gets empty. The kind elf asks you if you would like to make your very own toy. A toy that Santa can give to all the other children and it be made by you. And you can even give the toy a name. Maybe you give the toy your name. So you sit down at a workbench and design your toy. So for a little while, work on your toy. After you finish making your toy, 
You hand it to the elf, who checks it over and says how pleased he is with you for making such a grand toy. He places your beautiful toy on the shelf and asks you if you would like to explore on your own now. And you say, oh yes, please. You can now search for yourself to see what other rooms there are. So go ahead, have fun. The elf comes back now to collect you after all of your exploring and he takes you to the beautiful glowing wooden house. He knocks on the door and it is opened by Mrs. Claus, Santa's wife. She looks so lovely and so jolly and she is ever so happy to see you. She takes you into the sitting room and you sit in a big old leather armchair next to the roaring fire. And you notice that sitting opposite you is Santa. Santa! Oh my! Santa smiles at you and tells you to have some of Mrs. Claus' homemade lemonade and cakes. You say thank you and then pick up the biggest piece of your favorite cake you have ever seen. And it is delicious. Santa tells you that you have been extra good this year. And for that, he gives you a special gift just for you. Something just for you. Something you have always wanted. What is it? What is the special gift Santa has just for you? Take this time to spend with Santa. To talk to him. To tell him about all the things you've done this year. About how good you are and how you love your family and your friends and how kind you've been to all of the animals. So sit with Santa for a few minutes. Just have a chat.
Now it's time for you to return home. So you say thank you to Santa and to Mrs. Claus for letting you visit with them. You step outside to see that the reindeer have brought the sleigh to you and you climb aboard. You wave goodbye as the reindeer lift the sleigh into the air. The journey back home is at lightning speed. You whiz over the clearing and over the magical forest. You whiz over the rooftops, seeing the chimney pots again and the smoke from the fires drifting up into the sky. And before you know it, you are outside your bedroom window again. You climb back in through your bedroom window and turn to say thank you to the reindeer for this lovely surprise. You say goodbye and wave them off. And you watch as the sleigh glides through the sky and off into the distance and you can no longer see it. It's still snowing outside and your room is all warm and cosy. You close your window and climb back into bed. As you close your eyes, you wonder to yourself, did that really happen? Did I really just meet Santa? Well, yes, you did just meet Santa. So you smile happily to yourself, giving a big sigh of contentment, and slowly, but surely, you drift off to sleep. Now see yourself in your room and you notice for the first time a snow globe on your shelf. Seems a bit odd as you've never noticed this snow globe before. But the snow globe is so beautiful and it seems to be glowing and it's lighting up your whole room and you feel drawn to it almost as if it's calling to you so you go over and you pick up the snow globe and it really is beautiful can you feel it in your hands can you feel its energy you are absolutely mesmerized by its beauty you decide to shake it and whoosh suddenly you find yourself standing on a vast plain of ice. Just ice and snow. The snow globe must have somehow transported you to another land. And you feel very happy and safe here though. And you are wrapped up nice and cosy. And you are feeling so very peaceful and so very calm. Look around you. Is there anything else you can see on this vast plain of ice and snow? In the distance, you see a huge shape walking towards you. Can you see it? The shape gets closer and closer, bigger and bigger. And it looks a 
bit like a polar bear. It is. It's a polar bear. And this polar bear is huge. He is big and fairy, but he has a lovely kind face. The polar bear introduces himself to you. Yes, he can talk. He says his name is Eric and he is a magical polar bear from Winter Wonderland. And he says he would like to take you somewhere special as you seem a little bit lonely. He wants to take you to where he lives. Winter Wonderland. Of course you agree. After all, you never want to miss out on an adventure. You notice there is a round hole in the ice leading to the ocean under the surface. Eric the polar bear puts you on his back and dives under the water and you are amazed that you are able to breathe perfectly well under the water and you can see just as well, just as well as you can see on land, crystal clear. The water is warm, just like a nice bath. And this is quite remarkable. You look at Eric and notice he is smirking at you. Kind of grinning. Under the water is completely the opposite of the land. It is so colourful. The fish are so vibrant and this vast ocean is filled with life and colour. Can you see it? Can you see all the lovely fish and all the lovely colours? Take a short while to look around the underwater paradise with Eric the polar bear. Maybe you can ask Eric any questions that you may have. You come back up to land and still on Eric's fairy white shoulders. Wow, what a journey that was. 
you look up and you notice a wooden sign reading, Welcome to Winter Wonderland, a place where dreams come true. Well, that is a nice welcome. You instantly feel at home here and you have a really good feeling about this place. This place is absolutely amazing. It is so beautiful. And you look around. The polar bears all have their own log cabins. Yes, log cabins. And you see a giraffe driving a bus with his head popping out of the roof as his neck is so long. A giraffe with his head popping out of the roof. Oh my. You can see an elephant dressed in a suit reading a book. An elephant reading a book. No wonder they never forget anything. Wow, this really is a wonderful wonderland. Take a look around and see what else you can see. See what you can feel. See what you can hear. And just have fun. Eric the polar bear tells you he wants you to meet someone special in the beautiful ice palace. 
the emperor of the whole kingdom. So you make your way and you can see an incredible looking palace in the distance. You can see it sparkling in the sunshine and it almost looks like it's made from the stars and from diamonds. It shines so brightly. And as you reach the entrance of this amazing palace, you notice it's protected by a family of polar bears. And they all seem to know Eric and they shake his hand and say hello. It kind of looks like Eric is some kind of boss here. Eric introduces you to his friends and his family and you shake all of their big fairy hands and your hand kind of disappears into theirs. You walk through the amazing ice doors into the palace and you are greeted by a little penguin wearing a crown and a huge grin on his face. Eric gets down on his knees in respect but the little penguin tells him there is no need. This is the Emperor Penguin, the ruler of the whole of Winter Wonderland. You take a walk with the Emperor, or oh, really more of a waddle, because he can't walk very well. And he tells you all about his special kingdom. He tells you how all of the animals here live in perfect peace and harmony. Lions just walk past and smile rather than eating you because they don't really want to. There is no money here either. If people want things from the shops, instead what they do is they swap things or they do kind deeds for each other. Wow. This certainly is a wonderland, so perfect. So now you're going to spend just a few minutes exploring this magnificent ice palace and you're going to explore it with the Emperor Penguin. So take a good look around and see what you can see. See if you can bring back any messages or any wisdom. Ask the Emperor Penguin any questions that you may want answering or just have a chat.
just before you have to leave this wonderful kingdom, the Emperor Penguin tells you he has the power to grant wishes, but only wishes that are for good. And he allows you one special wish before you leave, a winter wonderland wish. So have a think about what you would like to wish for and make sure it is for something good. Now it's time to come back home and the Emperor Penguin pulls out a snow globe and tells you to hold it tightly and it will transport you straight back home again. You thank the Emperor Penguin for his hospitality and Eric of course. You give Eric a big hug and he tells you that you can come back here any time you want. All you have to do is hold out the snow globe in your room and call his name in your mind and he will come and get you. You feel so blessed. So you say goodbye and you take hold of the snow globe from the Emperor Penguin's hand and whoosh! You are back home again. You feel so happy now, so at peace and so calm and you feel so positive that kindness and goodness can really work in our world too. Each good deed that you do sends out a ripple of kindness across the world. Now imagine yourself surrounded by a beautiful white light. A light so bright and so pure. A light of protection and peace. Breathe in this beautiful white light and feel the light as it enters your whole body filling you up completely making you feel warm and very very safe now imagine yourself in an old wooden log cabin in the middle of a beautiful snowy forest and you are sitting in front of a lovely warm and crackling fire all nice and cosy you hear a tap on the window and you get up to see who it is you walk over and open the door and what you see is not a person at all it's a toy robot a toy robot the size of a small toddler and what's more it's a talking robot wow a talking robot he looks a bit scared though and you tell him not to be afraid. You are his friend. And if he needs help, you will be very happy to help him. He tells you his name is Rupert. And that he is lost. He doesn't know where he is. He tells you he lives in Fairyland. He tells you he was out walking and having an adventure. And he has somehow gotten lost and now doesn't know where he is. 
You tell him not to worry. You will help him find his way back to Fairyland. So you leave the cabin and you both walk around for a little while, searching, trying to find Fairyland, looking everywhere. As you walk around, Rupert tells you about his friends and the fairy Snow Queen. He tells you that there are other toys who are alive too. He tells you that the fairy Snow Queen waves her magic wand and sprinkles gold and stardust on them all and they all come to life. The Fairy Snow Queen gives life to all of the toys in the kingdom. There is snow everywhere and you laugh out loud when suddenly you are hit with a snowball. Rupert threw a snowball at you and you fall over. You jump up and throw one back at Rupert. He laughs too. So for a little while, play at snowball fighting with Rupert and just have some fun. Although he is having lots of fun, Rupert says he has to get back now, as his friends and the fairy Snow Queen, well, they'll be worried because they don't know where he is. So you and Rupert start to walk to find Fairyland and the Snow Queen's palace. Eventually, Rupert recognises a snowy path. And on this path are his good friends, Sophia and Norman. 
and they have been looking everywhere for Rupert. Rupert is ecstatic and shouts with joy. They both rush to meet him and give him great big hugs. Sophia is a little cuddly teddy bear with a pink bow in her hair. And Norman is a little yellow car with headlights for eyes. You say hello to them and they give you great big smiles back. Sophia says that the way to Fairyland is up ahead. Sophia starts to walk and you all follow. Rupert then realises that when you get to the snowy Fairyland, you won't be able to see it, as only fairies and toys can see Fairyland. Then he notices in the distance, just a little further back, is the Snow Queen herself. Oh wow! She is very beautiful and she has on the most sparkliest dress you have ever seen. She is floating in the air with her magic wand and with a magnificent golden crown on her head with lots and lots of jewels on it. She's all shiny and sparkly. The fairy Snow Queen smiles her beautiful smile at you and you go all shy. You have never seen anyone as beautiful as her. The Snow Queen gives Rupert a big hug because he is scared and he got lost again. Rupert is always getting lost when he sneaks out to have a look at the human world. The Fairy Snow Queen tells you that no human has ever been allowed to enter her kingdom before. But because you have been so kind, she will make the fairy land visible to you. The Snow Queen waves her wand and the kingdom suddenly becomes visible. And you are absolutely flabbergasted by the sight that you can see. The whole of the kingdom is covered with gold and stardust and it floats in the air like glitter, dancing in the light, making everything sparkle and shine. And only toys and fairies can live here and they live in peace and harmony and they love one another. Nobody ever quarrels. The Fairy Snow Queen says that you can go for a walk around Fairyland with her, Rupert, Sophia and Norman. She says that you can meet some more of the other toys if you want to. Do you want to? Maybe you will recognise some toys from back home. So for a few minutes, have a wander around Fairyland. Maybe you can visit the Snow Queen's palace as well. So take a little while to look around and see what you can see. See who you meet and just have a really, really good time.
Now it's time to return to your home. But before you do, the Fairy Snow Queen has a special gift for you. She hands you a beautiful golden key that sparkles with fairy dust. This special key from the Snow Queen will allow you to enter Fairyland any time you want. And when you take the key out of your pocket, Fairyland becomes visible. But you must never tell anyone, because if you do, the key will not work. You say your goodbyes to Rupert, Norman and Sophia, and you thank the Fairy Queen for letting you visit her beautiful home. And she smiles at you. The Fairy Snow Queen now sprinkles golden stardust all over your head. And magically, you are back at the cabin in the forest. Oh, you feel so happy. And you feel as if you have made a lot of new friends today. And you have... Now imagine that you are in your bedroom and you are just about to get ready for bed. Imagine putting on your pyjamas. Notice how clean and fresh they smell. And as you stand there deciding whether or not to get into bed, you hear a strange noise coming from your wardrobe. It sounds kind of like well, like a shuffling sound, or maybe a funny bumping sound. You can also hear the gentle sound of the wind. How strange. You wonder what this is. So with a lot of courage, you open the wardrobe door to investigate. And you wonder just what it is you'll find. To your amazement, you see a snowman sitting inside amongst your clothes. And to your further astonishment, you see that he's doing a crossword puzzle. You open your eyes very wide. You can't quite believe what you are seeing. The snowman has little flurries of snow all around him. And there is even some snow on your clothes too. The snowman has a large, brightly coloured scarf around his neck and an enormous carrot for a nose. He has a very large top hat on his head with a big yellow flower stuck in it. He gives you a big grin and he tells you that his name is Brian. But rather bizarrely, he already knows your name. He asks you if you want to go on an adventure with him, to which you say, oh yes, please. To your utter amazement, he opens the back of the wardrobe and you see before you an amazing snowy wonderland. Wow. You step through the back of your wardrobe with Brian into the snowy winter wonderland. Brian then hands you a really smart leather jacket and it has big badges all over it. He says, Here, you better put this on. It can get very cold where we are going. He then puts one on himself. But his jacket isn't as clean and nice as yours. Well, it's a bit scruffy really. But Brian doesn't seem to mind. He then walks with you a little way, where you see a very large and very shiny motorcycle. And it's bright pink. Bright pink! Brian tells you that pink is his favourite colour.
As you look at Brian's bright pink motorcycle, you can see his name on the side of the bike, and it's written in a very vivid purple colour, and it says, Brian the Snowman. And you think to yourself, oh, what a glorious bike this is. And Brian is ever so proud of it. Brian climbs on his motorcycle and he tells you to jump on behind him and hold on tight. He is taking you to the land of the snowman. Brian turns the key in the ignition and suddenly the motorcycle roars into life. And just as quickly, the motorcycle speeds off so fast that all you can do is hang on for dear life. Wow, Brian is a fast driver. As you both tear off into the distance, you realise that you are already in Snowman Land. And it's a very beautiful place. And there are long, slim icicles hanging from the trees that you pass. And everywhere is covered with snow. Glorious white snow. You can see lovely little houses. Well, igloos really. But they're all decorated with Christmas lights. And there are lots and lots of coloured lights everywhere. And there are Christmas trees on every single corner of all of the roads. The igloos all have smoke drifting out of their chimneys that sit on top of them. And you wonder to yourself, maybe they will all melt, you know, with the fire. The fire that's burning inside of them. Oh, you do hope not. You can see many other snowmen getting on with their lives. Some of them are driving cars. Some of them are doing their Christmas shopping. And some of them are even playing guitars and old tin drums on street corners. And they're busking for loose change. But they really are having lots of fun. Brian tells you that you're going on a little trip on the bikes. But first, you have to pick up a couple of his friends, because they would like to come too. So you pull up the bike outside a very pretty little igloo. Brian beeps his horn, and the front door opens, and out pops a very large white yeti. It's a yeti. A big yeti. She gives a big grin and she tells you her name is Betty. Betty the Yeti. Betty has a motorcycle too. Hers is a great big black monster of a bike. And Betty also has a boyfriend. Her boyfriend is a penguin called Jeff. Jeff is a very tiny penguin and he sits in a rucksack that Betty carries on her huge back and he looks ever so comfy and warm on Betty's back. You think that maybe Jeff is a bit hungry because he rummages around in the rucksack and pulls out a big sandwich and begins to eat it. How funny! When you are all sitting comfortably the two motorcycles roar off together skidding in the snow and you think that this is great fun and you laugh out loud and you are really enjoying this. As you go on your travels with Brian, Betty and Jeff, you meet their best friend Herbie. Herbie the Husky. Herbie is a biker too. He wears black shiny sunglasses, you know the ones, the ones that wrap around your head. Brian the Snowman really does have some rather colourful friends. You all decide to take a ride over the frozen lake. Brian says it will be great fun. 
you all roar around, slipping and sliding all over the place. And you pass by a very big tree, all covered with snow and icicles. Brian then sees his friend, Snotty the Snowflake, and he's hanging from one of the branches, and he shouts a big hello to him. Snotty the Snowflake grins back, wipes his runny nose, and shouts hello. So for a little while, spend some time with Brian the Snowman, Betty the Yeti, Jeff the Penguin, and Herbie the Husky. You can go anywhere you want with them. Where would you like to go most of all? Go there. Enjoy your ride. Now it's time for you to return, but not to your home, but to Brian's home. Brian lives in a huge igloo, but he lives there all by himself, and sometimes he tells you he gets very lonely. Brian asks you if you would like a sleepover at his igloo, so that he doesn't have to be alone, and you say a great big yes please. Brian's igloo is very cosy and warm and you see he has a big fire in the grate and it doesn't melt his igloo. Thank goodness for that. Brian invites you to take a look around his huge igloo with all of its many rooms. He says that you can go into any room you like and you can see what's there. So spend a little while doing just that. Have a good look around. See what Brian has. See if he has anything like you have in your home.
Now that you have finished looking at all of Brian's lovely cosy rooms, he takes you into his living room. And you see that he has a massive sofa that everyone can sit down on together. And there is lovely, relaxing music playing in the background. And it makes you feel all warm and safe. It's so nice here in Brian's living room. You sit down and you look around. And you notice as you look around that there are photographs all over Brian's walls. There are photos of his mum and his dad. There are photos of all of his brothers and his sisters. There is even a graduation picture of Brian on the wall looking very proud of himself in his smart cap and gown. This has been one very busy day for you and you kind of feel a bit sleepy now. But you can also hear the sound of snoring. And you look around and you see that everyone else has fallen asleep on the massive big sofa. Brian the snowman is asleep. So is Betty the Yeti. And Jeff the penguin is asleep too. But the one who is making the loudest snores is Herbie the Husky. And Herbie is lying on his back with his legs sticking straight up in the air and he's snoring happily away. You also feel a bit sleepy too. This music is so very relaxing. And your eyes are feeling so heavy now. So very, very heavy. And you feel so peaceful. So calm. And so very, very relaxed. Maybe you can just rest a bit yourself. Maybe you can just close your weary eyes and drift off into a lovely, peaceful sleep. After all, you have had a very busy day. It's Christmas Eve and you are relaxing in your bedroom. You are struggling to sleep with all the excitement about what tomorrow may bring. Then suddenly you hear a twinkling noise and a little elf appears before your very eyes. He's wearing a very smart green outfit and has curled up boots with little bells on the end and he looks ever so cute. The little elf says he's Santa's chief elf and they are really struggling this year. He says he could really do with a helping hand and they have chosen you, that's right, you, due to how much kindness you've displayed throughout the year. And he asks you if you would be willing to help Santa this Christmas. Oh, well, of course, you say yes. You look outside your bedroom window and you see Santa sat outside on his sleigh with his reindeers. Wow, it's actually Santa Claus. But he doesn't look happy though. He has his head in his hands. You take the hand of the elf, you blink your eyes and before you know it, you and the elf are stood outside next to Santa. <laughs> you can get used to this magic lark, it's dead cool. You ask Santa what's wrong and he tells you he's very worried that he isn't going to be able to deliver all of the presents this year and he really doesn't know what to do. So you tell Santa you would love to help in any way that you can and you ask if he has any other flying sleighs. Santa tells you he doesn't and his old one is out of action but then he suddenly perks up and informs you 
he does have a magic bus now. And you can see a sparkle return to his eyes. Santa tells you he has a flying bus and asks you if you would help him to deliver presents. Flying his magic bus. Wow, of course you would. Flying his magic bus? Oh, yes, please. Santa tells you to hop into his sleigh with the elf because you really can't afford to waste any more time. The sleigh takes off at lightning speed. Wow, you can't believe you are in Santa's sleigh with him, his chief elf and his beautiful reindeers. Oh my goodness me. Santa tells you you are heading back to his home to get everything sorted before delivering the presents. He tells you it is a magical place, a wonderful place, and you are going to love it. Take a couple of minutes to enjoy riding in Santa's sleigh with him. Have a chat with Santa, have a chat with the elf and the reindeers. And yes, they can talk. Take in the majestic views below you. See what you can see. You look ahead of you and you can see lots of sparkling lights of all different colours. It looks so magical. Santa tells you that this is his home. This is where he lives. Oh, wow. It's so beautiful. You see a huge workshop with lots of elves working ten to the dozen. You've never seen anything being made so quickly before. Their hands are moving so fast, you can't even see them. Mrs. Claus greets you, and she says she is delighted that you have agreed to help Santa bring Christmas to all of the children this year. And she gives you a great, big, huge hug. She is so warm and so friendly. Santa introduces you to his head handywoman, a humongous yeti, a humongous yeti called Betty. You may remember Betty from the snowman adventures. Every Christmas, Betty helps Santa out. She is the best fixer in the land. Betty can fix anything. Betty opens up Santa's huge garage. And there it is. 
the magic bus. It doesn't look like it's been used for quite a while now and it's gathered, well, a little bit of dust. But Betty turns the key and it starts up straight away. Betty tells you to get in and take a look. Wow! It's a lot bigger on the inside than it appears to be on the outside. There are lots of really comfy seats. Even beds in the back. There are TVs scattered around and what looks to be lots of toy-making equipment. You look at the buttons on the dashboard. There are so many. One says, present delivery. Another one says, hyperspeed. And yet another one says, autopilot. Oh my. Wow, this is cool. Betty says she's going to assist you in the magic bus with a team of elves who will be making toys in the back while Santa is off on his sleigh with the reindeers. Santa hands you a map with all the places you need to deliver to and tells you not to worry. Betty knows where all the places are and she will help you find them all. You are in safe hands with Betty. Santa gives you a huge hug and gets back on his sleigh with the reindeers to deliver the presents. And he waves as he sets off. And he does the usual ho, ho, ho. And off he goes. Meanwhile, you notice a huge team of elves entering the bus. Both men and lady elves. Some are younger, some are older. But they all begin to make the toys straight away in the back of the bus. And they seem very determined to make sure this Christmas is just perfect for the whole wide world. Betty tells you that you must set off now. So you sit in the pilot seat and Betty sits beside you. She is so large that her head is touching the roof. You press the take off button and the magic bus zooms straight out of the garage and up into the air at lightning speed. Wow, what a ride this is. You take the steering wheel and are surprised at how easy it is. You go left, you go right, you go up and you go down. You get so confident that you even do a loop-the-loop. Hoo-hoo! One of the elves in the back didn't seem too impressed with that, though. Oops. Betty laughed and advised you that this elf is nicknamed Grumpy and not to worry about him. You look out of the window and the amazing views. All the pretty lights below you. You can't believe how lucky you are to get this opportunity to help Santa and fly his magic bus. A little elf comes up to you and offers you a drink and some candy they've just made and it looks delicious. Take this time to deliver presents all around the world. You can even put the bus on autopilot for a little while and help the elves make some toys. Even enjoy having a little drink and eating the candy. Maybe you could spend some time getting to know Betty the Yeti and the elves a little bit better. You decide. It's up to you. But remember, make sure you get all of those presents delivered.
you finish delivering the presents to the final houses on the list. You have done it. Betty the Yeti and all the elves cheer and clap hands. The elves all jump on you and give you a big group hug. You are laughing and rolling around. You look up and you see Betty moonwalking down the bus. What a sight to behold. Wow, you have never been so happy. The bus lands back at Santa's house. And you get out of the bus and Santa is waiting for you with a huge grin on his cheeky face. He does a little dance and he twirls around and he punches the air with his fist. Then he gives you a high five. It is so funny to watch. You didn't realise Santa could move like that. You all laugh and he gives you a big hug. He thanks you for saving Christmas. And he says he couldn't have done it without your help. And he says that you can help him every Christmas if you would like to. He says you can have a look around the elves' workshop and choose any present that you want to take home with you. Anything. Anything at all. Oh, this is going to be good. Have a quick look around and see what takes your fancy. The chief elf then offers you some magic dust to get you straight back home in time for your Christmas. And you really wouldn't want to miss that, would you? Before you know it, you are back in your own bed, feeling ever so sleepy now. But you are so happy to have met Santa and his friends, especially Betty the Yeti. And you can't wait to visit again next year. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll be feeling refreshed, filled with positivity, and so excited for the day ahead. So for now, sweet dreams and night night. Now imagine yourself sitting in a large green field The sun is shining brightly and it's a very beautiful clear day and you can see for miles and miles around. You feel very calm, very relaxed and very, very peaceful. You can hear birds singing to each other. Can you hear them? As you look up at the sky, you see a beautiful rainbow of many colours and the colours are so bright and so clear can you see it can you see the beautiful rainbow of many colours see how the colours sparkle and shine see how the colours look almost alive and it's then that you notice something different about this rainbow You can see some sort of uh, white stuff and it's floating all around it and it's on it. 
So you stop at the beginning of the rainbow and you take a good look at it. And you realise that the rainbow has snow flurries gently falling down all over it. Oh my goodness me. A rainbow with snow on it. The rainbow is decorated with tinsel. Lots and lots of brightly coloured tinsel. And there are sleigh bells jingling all over the rainbow. And you can hear them. And it fills you with such delight. You step onto the snow-covered rainbow and it begins to move. You can touch the colours of the rainbow. You can also touch the snow that's floating gently all around it and it feels so cool to the touch. It feels so soft and so light. And the sleigh bells are jingling all around you. It's like it's Christmas and it nearly is. The rainbow goes higher still and you can see the fields below you and you can see many, many trees and you can see the birds flying. You can see them flying past the rainbow. But you really do find it so very strange that there is no snow anywhere else, only on the rainbow. How odd. The rainbow reaches its topmost part and then it begins to move back down again. And it's starting to get a bit slippy now on this rainbow. So you decide to sit down and as you do, you begin to slip and slide in the snow that's covered all of the rainbow. You are sliding down the snow covered rainbow now. And the snow is sticking to your hair and on your clothes. Oh, and it feels so great. So great that you start to laugh out loud. You are having so much fun. You are going faster and faster. And you're laughing so hard that your tummy hurts. You can see the end of the rainbow now and it's coming fast. And you notice that at the bottom of the rainbow, there is a massive wall of snow. Oh my. You hit the snowy wall so fast, but then you charge straight through it, still laughing. And all around there, there is snow. Fields and mountains of glorious white snow. So just for a moment, have a little play in the snow. Make a snowman. See how far you can throw a snowball. Have some fun.
you finally stop playing and look around you. And you can see the trees all covered in beautiful white snow. And they look so pretty. And as you walk, you come across a huge sign. And it says, Welcome to Unicornia, land of the unicorns. And underneath this, it says, Merry Christmas. Wow, you have arrived once again in Unicornia. Oh, how wonderful that is. You look down at yourself and you realise that you have on very warm and woolly clothes. That's quite funny because you don't remember putting them on that day. Not at all. And it's such a cold day, but you are wrapped up nice and warm. You look up and you can see unicorns. There are unicorns everywhere and they too are all playing in the snow. There are Christmas lights hanging on every tree. Lots and lots of beautiful coloured lights everywhere. You notice that all of the unicorns are all wearing woolly jumpers too. But their jumpers are Christmas jumpers. Some of their jumpers have sparkly Christmas trees on them. Some of them have reindeer on them. And some of them have a big happy Santa Claus face on them. And you are so excited to see the unicorns again and even more excited because they are all wearing lovely great big Christmas jumpers. You can see robins dancing in the snow and one little robin has a bright red hat on with a tiny jingly bell on it and you can hear it as he plays in the snow. He is even whistling the jingle bell song as he dances. Can you hear it? One of the unicorns steps forward to greet you and you recognise her. It is the Princess Unicorn. She is very, very beautiful and she is much whiter than the others and her coat is very silky and shiny. She is a sparkling, glittering, magical unicorn and she too is wearing her best Christmas jumper. She smiles at you and she wishes you a Merry Christmas and she is so happy that you came back for a visit. She asks you if you would like to come with her as she has something very special to do today. She is taking all the presents to the baby unicorns in the nursery because it's their Christmas party today. You say, oh yes, please. So you climb up on her back and she spreads her wings and off you go. And you fly high, higher and higher. The Princess Unicorn makes a quick stop to the Unicorn Santa's Grotto to collect all of the presents. Here he is called Santa Uniclaus. And he is rather a large unicorn with a big pot belly that jiggles when he laughs. And he laughs a lot. He is dressed in his Santa clothes, lots and lots of red. He says that red is his favourite colour. He has a very white, big beard that you might think have bits of his dinner still in it. Oh dear. Two of his elf helpers are sitting beside him and they hand him a rather large present. Santa Uniclaus takes it and he looks carefully at the name tag and then, to your amazement, he hands it to you. You get a present too. You excitedly unwrap this wonderful gift and take a look at it. What is it? What gift did you get? 
Is it something you have always wanted? You say thank you to Santa Unicloss for this lovely gift. Santa is so very busy that he asked the Princess Unicorn to help him today. And you too get to help the Princess Unicorn. You arrive at the nursery. And the Baby Unicorn Nursery is all decorated with Christmas trees and many, many sparkling lights. Oh, it looks so magical. You have never seen anything so beautiful before. You climb down off the Princess Unicorn's back and you help her to give the presents to all of the Baby Unicorns. And the Baby Unicorns look so happy. They are all giggling and laughing with joy. They are so excited to see the Princess Unicorn and that she and you have come to play with them today. So the two of you start to give out all of the presents to the little baby unicorns. So spend a few moments with the baby unicorns. Give them all their gifts. Talk to them. Play with them. Just have some fun for just a little while with the Princess Unicorn and the little tiny baby unicorns. Now, it's time for you to come home. After all, it's very nearly your Christmas too. Now, you don't want to miss that, do you? I know I don't. So you say goodbye to the little baby unicorns and climb back up onto the princess unicorn's back. And very quickly, almost in the blink of an eye, she takes you back to the beautiful rainbow. You climb down and you give her a great big hug and you tell her you will be back again soon. You step onto the beautiful rainbow and begin your journey back home, all the time waving to the Princess Unicorn. Now imagine yourself standing in front of a huge tree and this tree has deep, deep roots and it has branches that reach out in every direction. But this beautiful tree is all covered in pure white snow. Everywhere is covered in snow. How wonderful. There are little icicles 
hanging from the branches of the tree, with tiny bright white lights twinkling all over it. Oh, it looks so magnificent! This is your special place. The place where only you can go. In this tree house, you feel very safe and warm. And you feel you can do anything you want here. And you can. Because this is your tree house. You see a rope ladder hanging down from one of the highest branches. And this too has sparkling lights wrapped all around it. There is even silver tinsel wrapped all the way along the sides of the ladder. And the whole tree is lit up with shining lights. And it looks so very beautiful. You begin to climb the ladder, feeling very excited indeed. You climb and you climb. And you climb up through a trap door, right inside the treehouse. And what you see inside is truly wonderful. This amazing treehouse is filled with your favourite things. Everything you love is here, right here, and it's all yours. You have a quick look around and you recognise all of the things. And you walk into the middle of the room because something has caught your attention. Something that wasn't here last time you came to visit. Standing in the middle of the room is a very big box in the middle of the floor. So you open it and have a look inside. And you see that it is filled with Christmas decorations, many, many of them, all different sizes and different shapes, and you feel so excited by this. You also notice that standing in the corner of this very special room is a huge Christmas tree. It's a very beautiful pine tree and its branches are glistening and shining and you know, you just know that this tree has been waiting for you. Waiting for you to decorate it and make it look so pretty. So you decide to decorate your tree and the room you are in. And you can do this any way you want to, any way at all, whatever colour you like, because it's your tree house. It's your festive tree house. So you go back to the box and start taking out all of the things you want to use. So spend a little while decorating your tree and the room too. You may even find some decorations that remind you of someone special who maybe is not with you anymore. Maybe that someone special comes for a visit with you. Maybe it's even an old pet you used to have. So take some time to be with them and let them help you wrap your presents. It's going to be lots of fun.
Now that you have finished decorating your tree and the room, you realise just how beautiful you have made the treehouse look. It looks fantastic in your favourite colours with as many Christmas lights as you want. You notice a door on the other side of the room. You never noticed it when you came in last time. You never noticed it when you came in before. So you go over to the door and you open it because you want to see what is on the other side of it. As you look inside the room, you give a great big gasp of surprise. The room is filled with presents. Absolutely filled with presents. All different shapes and sizes. And there are some very large ones too. Oh my. Maybe there's one for you. You see a table with wrapping paper on it and everything you need to make the presents even more special because you now get to wrap them with ribbons and bows if you want to tinsel if you want to you can even put Christmas lights on them if you want to if you want you can use all the presents every single one of them or maybe you only need just a few you can wrap some of these amazing presents for your friends and for your family. Even your pet if you want to. You can make them look just how you want them to be. Whatever you think looks good. You can give whatever you want to make your friends and family feel happy when they look at it. Knowing that you did this for them. And anything that makes you feel happy too, you can do. So have some fun wrapping all of the presents, or just a few of them, and enjoy yourself. Have fun for just a little while. Wow, that was a lot of wrapping. And you feel a bit pooped now. So you decide to take a seat in your favourite chair. And you help yourself to the hot chocolate and mince pies that have suddenly appeared on the little table beside you. Oh, how yummy. You see marshmallows sitting on a plate with a great big toasting fork next to it by the side of the big open log fire. They are waiting for you to toast them and to eat them all up. 
As you sit there, smiling to yourself, watching the marshmallows toasting on the fire, feeling very happy, you can smell Christmas dinner and it smells really lovely. It's even making you feel hungry. You can smell the pine of the Christmas tree. You can smell the log fire burning. And all of this is making you feel so peaceful and so calm, but also very excited. Because you know that it's very nearly Christmas. You can hear your favourite Christmas carol playing in the background and you sing along to it. What a wonderful day this is. What a wonderful festive treehouse you have and it's all yours. From the comfort of your favourite chair you can see out of the window and you look through the window and you can see the gentle snow falling and you watch how it covers everything. You see how pretty everything looks. You notice the different sized snowflakes that are falling down gently. There are some big thick snowflakes and there are some tiny snowflakes. It's like they just float down from heaven. You feel so blissfully happy and give a great big happy sigh. <sighs> you feel so excited because the next day is Christmas Day and you have to be home on time to take your lovely warm bath and put on your new pyjamas. So you take one last look around your beautiful room and amazing Christmas tree and you walk over to the trapdoor in the floor. You climb down the rope ladder feeling the lovely tinsel as you go. You reach the bottom and you stand beside your beautiful snow-covered festive treehouse and you smile. Now imagine that you are standing in a beautiful forest and it's all covered with clean fresh white snow. And it's Christmas Eve and you are very excited. It's been snowing all day in this beautiful forest. And it's still snowing now. And it's covering everything that you can see. The trees, all the tips covered in snow. And it feels cold, but that's okay because you're all wrapped up in your thickest coat and warmest boots and big soft gloves. You look around you. What can you see? Can you see the tall trees dripping with snowflakes? Can you see the little icicles hanging from their strong, sturdy branches? Can you feel the snowflakes as they land on your face, tickling you. It is cold here, but it's also wonderful. And you feel so excited and so happy. You look ahead of you and you see, you can see smoke. And it's rising into the sky from behind yet more trees. So you decide 
to go and investigate. You walk through the trees and you come out the other side into a lovely clearing and you can see a beautiful little cottage. This is where the smoke is coming from. It's coming from out of a little chimney perched on top of the little cottage. It's kind of a crooked little cottage, but it looks so warm and inviting, especially as it's now freezing cold. But you're happy and warm inside your thick coat with your extra thick woolly socks on under your boots. As you get closer to the cottage, you notice that there are lights on inside it and you wonder who is in there. So you go up to the door and you knock door gently opens by itself so you walk inside. There is no one there but you and you feel so warm and it feels so very inviting. It's so cosy with the log fire burning. Oh and you can hear the crackling and it smells so nice. There are big squishy sofas and chairs full of soft cushions. And there are candles lit all around the room, making it feel so lovely, so nice and so warm. There is a giant Christmas tree in the corner of the room with lots and lots of presents under it and you wonder who they are for. There is a very winding staircase in another corner of the room. It looks a bit crooked, but it's very strong. You turn back towards the fire and you notice that there is a little table near it. You didn't see it when you first came in, but you do now. And on that table is a letter addressed to you. So you open it and you read what it says. It says that you are very welcome here and you can help yourself to anything that you want. There is hot chocolate steaming away in a cup on the table and a plate full of mince pies and chocolate marshmallows. The letter says you can even have a sleepover if you want to. How exciting is that? So you spend a few moments having a good look around the little cottage, feeling very excited. So just for a moment, Go into all of the little rooms and explore and see what's there. You come back to the fire, just as you are about to sit down with your hot chocolate and mince pies, you hear a noise outside. So you get up and go to the door to investigate. What you see outside makes you gasp aloud. What you see is Santa. His sleigh is filled with presents and then you notice There is a very large polar bear standing next to Santa and on his back is a baby polar bear. Oh my! Santa notices you and turns around. He shouts hello to you and waves at you to come over. So you do. You are even more excited 
than you were before. And it doesn't get much better than this. Santa introduces you to the polar bear, whose name is Fred. The little one on his back, well, he's called George. And George is very shy and just gives you a little smile. Fred the polar bear is not shy at all. In fact, he's a bit loud, but very friendly. Hello, George says in rather a loud voice. And you grin and say hello back. You tell Santa all about the little cottage and what's inside. And Santa informs you that the little cottage is his. And it's for very special people, just like you. He says you must have been extra good this year to be able to find this place but he's very glad you did you realize it's very cold standing outside and the little baby polar bear is shivering a bit even with his thick fur coat so santa says you should all go back inside the cottage and get nice and warm and once you are inside the cottage you all take a seat by the fire Oh, it feels so cosy and so nice. Each of you now has a steaming hot mug of hot chocolate. And the plate of mince pies has gotten very big now, with loads of them on it. And a massive mound of chocolate marshmallows too. Santa, sitting in a big chair by the fire, picks up a book that is on the hearth. It's a Christmas story book, but it's a very special book. It's a very big book too. Santa asks you if you would like to hear a story and you all say, oh yes, please. So he puts on his glasses, adjusts his beard and begins to read a story to all of you. And it's a great story, full of exciting things and people and you are really enjoying it. Then, something very special happens. You feel yourself being pulled into the book, pulled into the story itself. How wonderful. Fred, George and Santa are also pulled into the book. Where are you? Where did you go? What's it like there? So for a few moments, be in the story. Find out what it's about. Find out where you have gone and who else is there. This is a very special Christmas story and you are the main character. So go and have some fun for a while and enjoy yourself. You may even come back with a present or two.
You now find yourself back in the room of the little cottage with Santa, Fred and George. And you feel amazing. Where did you go in the book? Who did you meet there? Was it fun? And most important of all, did you bring back a present for yourself? Or did you bring back a present for someone special? You feel a bit sleepy now, a bit tired after being in the story with Santa, Fred and George. So Santa says that you can sleep in the cottage tonight. Fred and George are staying too. Unfortunately, Santa can't stay because it's a very, very busy night for him. And he has a lot of places he must go and a lot of presents to deliver. And he really doesn't want to be late. Oh yes, you think to yourself, you forgot. It's Christmas Eve. You tell Santa that you really must go home, but Santa says, Don't worry. Don't you worry about that at all, because when you wake up in the morning, you will be in your very own bed. Santa can do this because he's a very special, magical being. Santa puts down the book and takes you all up the winding, creaky old staircase to the bedrooms above. You enter the most amazing bedroom with everything you have ever wanted to have inside it. There are even little tiny fireflies dancing around the room, giving it a wonderful soft glow. There are three big soft beds with the fluffiest quilts and pillows on them, and you dive onto yours. You sink down into it and feel so safe. It's like wrapping yourself in massive hooks, so warm and comfy and cosy. You settle yourself down, and so does Fred and George. George is sleeping with his dad because he's only little and he wants to stay close to him. Santa says he must go now, and you must sleep. You have a big day ahead of you tomorrow, what with all the unwrapping of the presents you're going to have to do. And you'll also get to see all of your family and your friends too, even the ones you don't really want to. Santa says you must be extra kind to the ones you don't want to see because sometimes people are lonely but they just don't tell anyone. Sometimes people are sad so you must be kind to them and help them to be happy again. Santa gives you a great big Santa hug and then leaves the room. You hear him go down the stairs then out of the big front door of the cottage. You then hear the tinkling of the sleigh bells and you get up out of your bed and open the window and peek outside. And you can see Santa sitting on his sleigh and the reindeer have now joined him. You didn't see them before because they were eating their oats and carrots to give them the energy for the long night ahead they have. It's hard work, you know, pulling a sleigh filled full of presents for kids all over the world. Plus, they have a very large Santa to pull to. You watch as the sleigh glides through the sky and off into the distance until you can no longer see it. But you can still hear Santa doing his ho, ho, ho's. And it's still snowing outside, but your room is all warm and cosy. You close your window and you climb back into bed. And as you close your eyes, you wonder to yourself, did that really happen? Did I really just meet Santa? Well, yes, you did just meet Santa and Fred and George too. You look over at Fred and George and they are already asleep and you smile happily to yourself giving a great big sigh of contentment and slowly but surely you drift off to sleep 
thinking about all the presents you will get to open tomorrow. So imagine yourself walking through a winter scene in the mountains. The snow is falling gently upon your face and you're wrapped up all snug and warm. Oh, and you feel so safe here, so peaceful and so very relaxed. But even though it's cold, there is a warmth in the air. You reach the top of a hill and notice a wooden sign and it reads welcome to the snow village the magical place where the snow never stops oh that sounds so exciting you've never heard of this place before you take a look down the hill and at the bottom you see a tapestry of colors in the distance with bizarre looking buildings really you can hear sounds of laughter and songs of joy Hmm, you need to take a closer look at this place, you think? You get closer to the village, and there seems to be a carnival atmosphere. It's wonderful. There's a small path that leads to the entrance, where someone appears to be awaiting your arrival. You get closer still and realise it's a snowman. Well... It's a snow girl, actually. A real, live snow girl. Wow! She's wearing a pink bubble hat with a matching scarf and her smile could light up an igloo. She runs up to you and wraps her snowy arms around your body and squeezes you so tightly. Oh, what a lovely welcome. She tells you her name is Gracie and that the snow village is run by the snow people. Lots of snow men, snow women and snow children. She had heard her family talking about your arrival and tells you she cannot wait to show you around. She's ever so friendly and you are ever so excited. Gracie tells you it's holiday season in Snow Village and the atmosphere is electric you walk past a choir of snow people singing. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. You can't help but sing along yourself. The wonky houses and shops are so colourful and quirky. And there's a forest behind the village where all the trees are decorated and lit up. It's quite magical. It's beautiful, in fact. There are huge candy cane sticks dotted around all over the place and you wonder what they're for. Well, Gracie informs you that the sticks have lights in them that light up the village when it gets dark. Sure beats our boring street lights, doesn't it? It is bustling in the village and it appears the chosen form of transport for the snow folk seems to be via a sleigh pulled by a pack of snow wolves. Yep, yeah, that's right, snow wolves. But they look such friendly, beautiful creatures. And they pull the snow people around the village at some great speed. You look around and see all kinds going on. You see snowmen and women playing 10 pin bowling, but using giant snowballs as the ball. How strange is that? You see a zip wire through the snow forest in the distance and you can hear the screams of delight. What a fun place this is. You notice a snowball fly right past your shoulder and Gracie laughs. She tells you the snowball championship is going ahead at this very moment and it really is a big deal in the snow village. In the distance, near where the snow folk are skiing, 
you observe what appears to be a ginormous roller coaster. Gracie tells you that this is the snow coaster and it's made totally of ice. She says it's the most amazing ride ever and she'll take you for a ride if you want to go on it later. Oh yes, you do. So, spend a short while with Gracie as she shows you around the magical snow village. Get to know each other a little better. Maybe you can tell her about where you live too and what it's like there. Gracie may introduce you to her friends and her family. Maybe you can enjoy some of the activities they have here and they seem to have a lot. Or maybe you can visit the shop or go on the snow coaster. It's up to you. Have fun. What a truly amazing place this is. Gracie says you both deserve a treat. So she takes you to a little igloo. She says this is the ice cream igloo and they produce the most delicious ice creams in the whole village. So what do you fancy? You can choose any flavour you like. Oh, yummy. That certainly was delicious. Before it gets dark, Gracie is eager for you to meet her friend, the snowbird. 
She tells you the snowbird is a very rare and mystical creature, but also very funny. And his name is Gerald. You look up at the sky above you, and there he is, flapping his enormous wings. And you are amazed at his beauty and the size of this incredible creature. He's like an eagle, but ten times as big. Gerald, the snowbird, lands next to you and does a forward roll and says, Hello, hadoodle-doo, my little lovelies. Who have we here, young Gracie? Gracie chuckles and introduces you to Gerald. Splendid. How about a ride back home before it gets dark? Climb on and hold tight, little cherubs. So you climb on Gerald's back and before you know it, you are flying through the air at lightning speed. Gerald is even faster than the snow coaster and that's saying something. You go up and down and even do a loop the loop Ooh, that one was a bit scary. Gerald is putting on quite a performance and you and Gracie cannot stop laughing. This is so much fun. You look down and you can see the village all lit up. The lights on the candy canes are all turned on now and it looks majestic it is so beautiful then suddenly with a little bump you land on the ground and Gerald doesn't hang around there we go me little beauties see you next time cheerio what a character Gerald is what an amazing day you have had Though you are feeling a little tired now. And Gracie says they have a special snug room for visitors. And you're welcome to have a sleepover with her if you like. Oh yes, you do like. You enter the snug room, which is a bright yellow, wonky house. But it's so warm and cosy and so homely. You really like it here. You notice a snowman-shaped bed with thick fur covers. You climb on it and lie in it. This feels so good. You look out of the window at the beautiful snow village. The stars sparkling in the sky look so wonderful. And you feel so very blessed. You cannot wait to come back here next year. Gracie tells you you're welcome to come back any time you like. But your eyelids feel so heavy now. And you're feeling so sleepy. Because you've had such a wonderful day. But you're so very relaxed. And so very peaceful. So very calm. So close your eyes. And just allow yourself to gently slip into sleep feeling so content, so safe, so very loved and so very protected. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll be back in your own bed, feeling very refreshed and filled with positivity and excited for your next trip to the snow village. But for now, sweet dreams. Night night. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful lush green meadow and there are flowers growing all around the edges of this lovely field. Parts of it have very long grass and it's blowing in the gentle breeze. And here you are safe, you are loved and you are protected always. Look around you. What else can you see? Take a good look around you. You hear rustling in the long grass and you wonder, what is it? You peer up ahead of you and say to yourself, no, it can't be, can it? Bounding towards you through the long grass is Simon. The little black pug dog you met last time you were here. 
but he looks a little bit bigger this time though. He dashes up to you and he leaps into the air and lands on top of you. He is so excited to see you again. His little tail is waggling like crazy. He is so happy to see you and you are delighted to see him. He settles down and asks how you are. He tells you that it's nearly Christmas at Puppet Palace. And he asks you if you would like to come again. Well, of course you would. He says all the other puppies remember you from last time you visited them and they can't stop asking about you and can't wait to see you again. Just then, you hear another voice and this one you do recognise. It's Simon's mum, Violet, looking for him again. Oh, there you are, Simon, she says. She sees you and gives you a great big grin and says, Oh, hello again. Have you come to stay with us? You feel something in your pocket and pull it out. It's an invitation to spend Christmas at Puppy Palace with the King and Queen and all of the other puppies and their families. The King and Queen have already spoken to your parents and guardians and they have agreed that you can spend Christmas with them if you wish. You are thrilled at this because you know that at Puppy Palace their Christmas is a week earlier than yours so you could have two Christmases if you want to. Well of course you say yes who wouldn't want to have two Christmases? In the envelope there is magic puppy dust. It's very silky and very sparkly. And Violet tells you that all you have to do is throw it in the air and within the blink of an eye, you'll be straight back at Puppy Palace. So you grab a great big pinch of the magic puppy dust and sprinkle it all over you, Simon and Violet and poof, you find yourself back in the field with Violet and Simon. But this time, there are fairy lights everywhere. They're in the trees, they're in the bushes, they're all over the white wooden fence. And on the gate, there is a huge sign in twinkling lights saying, Welcome to Puppy Palace Winter Wonderland. You're back again. Violet opens the gate and you all trot through it. What you see on the other side is absolutely amazing. You see the very large castle with the many turrets and the whole place is still painted white with big black spots all over it. But this time the palace is covered with thousands of sparkling lights in many different colours and lots and lots and lots of snow. You once again follow the pathway to the palace up to the most amazingly large doors the biggest you've ever seen. They are enormous. And again, they are still white with black spots. But there is the most amazing wreath hanging on each door. The big doors open up for you as if by magic. And when you step through the other side, you see what looks like a gigantic house of fun. You see a majestic scene of bright colours everywhere. There are lots of dazzling colourful lights all over the place. Every door that you see has wreaths on them and each one is different but they are very shiny and very sparkly. The snow is all around you and it's still snowing even now. You see dogs made of snow with big brightly coloured scarves on them. They even have pieces of coal for their noses. Some of them even have hats on. And some of them look as if they are smoking a pipe. They look ever so funny. There are fireflies in jars hanging in all of the trees. Oh, it looks so wonderful. There are candy canes dangling in the trees with lots of doggy treats too. There are bright red Christmas stockings hanging all over the place. You see many brightly lit reindeer standing in the snow and they too shine so brightly with all of the twinkling lights all over them. The Christmas trees are amazing. There are many of them, but there is one 
that is the biggest of them all. It has a beautiful star-shaped light hanging all over it. There are glass bauble decorations, all shaped like little dogs. In fact, there's a bauble for every kind of dog that there is. It's filled with treats for everyone. And it looks so beautiful with the snow gently falling down on it. Suddenly, there is a rush of commotion and many puppies come rushing towards you. The pups recognise you. They jump all over you, giving you hundreds of puppy kisses. And each one of them is wearing their winter outfits and they look ever so posh. And it's to keep them nice and warm and snuggly. And it's like a riot of colour everywhere. Simon introduces you to his best friend, who is called Noel. Noel is a huge St. Bernard. He is ginormous. And you think it looks kind of funny, really, as Simon is a tiny pug dog and his best friend Noel is a giant St. Bernard. He makes Simon look very small indeed. Simon and Noel are wearing matching jumpers with a big doggy Santa paws on them. And they've got little lights on them too and they sparkle. Santa Paws is a doggy version of your Santa. Simon tells you that it is Winter Wonderland at the palace now, with lots of new things to explore since your last visit. It's Christmas here, and they have gone all out to make it fantastic. And you think it really does look fantastic. Simon begins to tell you what new things they have. The Olympic-sized swimming pool has been converted into a huge ice rink and they've been playing ice hockey on it. Also, when they were not playing ice hockey, they've been skating, you know, ice skating, like Torval and Dean. But not quite as good as them, but nearly. He tells you they have a bobsleigh that goes all the way around the palace. They have a giant ski slope with dogs on skis, which is very funny to watch as they have two paws on each ski and they wobble a lot and they fall off a lot too. Simon says that you can even join in with the annual Hide and Sneak Championship, if you like. And it is just like Hide and Seek, but in the snow. How cool is that, sneaking around? Wow! There are so many different things for you all to do. So for a few moments, join in with all the puppies and have some fun. Maybe you can do the bobsleigh or the ice hockey. Maybe you can do all of them. So go and have some fun with Simon and his best friend, Noel.
was such fun. But now it's time to return to the castle for the big Christmas feast. You enter the great hall and see the King Hans, the German Shepherd, and Queen Penelope, the Poodle, sitting on their thrones at the head of the great table. The table is laid with the biggest feast you have ever seen. There is all the food you could ever wish to eat. There is an enormous turkey, a big joint of ham, and a piece of roast beef so big, looks like it's the size of a cow. There is every vegetable known to dog, and there are vegetarian and vegan options available too. You wonder what on earth there will be for pudding, and if you can even fit it into your belly. There is lots of laughter all around the table as you sit down on your chair. Everyone is having so much fun. There is even a puppy choir singing jingle bells at the top of the room. So enjoy your food and have fun. Wow, that was a lot of food to eat. You didn't think you'd eat that much, did you? But you did. Now it's time for roasting marshmallows on the big open fire. So you and the puppies all sit with your marshmallows on a big silver fork, chatting and having fun and watching them roast and it smells delicious. After you've eaten your marshmallows, Simon says there's a little surprise for you. He tells you that with all the leftover food that no one can eat, you're all going to have a food fight. Oh my goodness me. Wow, a food fight. This is so cool. You all rush to the table and grab whatever food you can and start throwing it at each other. You're laughing so much that your sides hurt just a little bit. The food flies backwards and forwards, hits people on the noses, on their ears, and it plops down on their heads. This is so much fun. You, Simon and Noel, covered with gravy, potatoes, peas and everything else and you just squeal with laughter. You've never had so much fun. This is an amazing place to be. Then Violet steps in to calm you all down and gently tells you that you all have to get cleaned up because it's really time for bed now. So off you all go to have a wash and put on your clean PJs. Violet sees that the three of you are really tired now and leads you into another very large room. This is the room which has the biggest dog bed you have ever seen. It is the size of a small house. Oh my! It's made of the softest fur and has the biggest, squishiest cushions made of feathers for you to lie down on. Just before you climb into bed, Violet says there is a gift for each of you and then she hands them to you. Your gift has brightly coloured wrapping paper 
and is tied with silver tinsel. Wow, what is it? What is the beautiful gift they have given to you? You feel so very happy now. You know you truly have really beautiful and kind friends. You are so grateful for them being in your life and you give a great big sigh of happiness. The three of you try to climb in the big bed with Noel, but because he is so big, there's no room for you and Simon. Besides, Simon whispers to you that although he loves Noel, his best friend, so very much, he does snore really loudly. So you and Simon get into your own smaller bed. You close your eyes and you snuggle down to sleep. You take a big, deep breath and sigh it out because you are so very happy. So happy to be with Simon and his best friend, Noel. So happy to be with these beautiful puppies, these wonderful puppies with very big brown eyes and they're just filled full of love. So happy to have met all of the other lovely puppies. And this has been the best Christmas ever. So snuggle up next to Simon and breathe in gently as you slowly drift into the most peaceful night's sleep. Good night, sleep tight, oh, and happy Christmas. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was staring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in the hope that Santa soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. A mama in a nightdress and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to the objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his courses they came. He whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Dunder and Blixen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof, the prancing and pouring of each tiny hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fair from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up in a bow and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, 
and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump and a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Merry Christmas everyone. Night night. Sleep tight. Now imagine that you are standing in a beautiful forest and it's all covered with clean fresh white snow and it's Christmas Eve and you are very excited it's been snowing all day in this beautiful forest and it's still snowing now and it's covering everything that you can see the trees all the tips covered in snow and it feels cold, but that's okay, because you're all wrapped up in your thickest coat and warmest boots and big soft gloves. You look around you. What can you see? Can you see the tall trees dripping with snowflakes? Can you see the little icicles hanging from their strong, sturdy branches? Can you feel the snowflakes as they land on your face, tickling you? It is cold here, but it's also wonderful. And you feel so excited and so happy. You look ahead of you and you see, you can see smoke. And it's rising into the sky from behind yet more trees. So you decide to go and investigate. You walk through the trees and you come out the other side into a lovely clearing and you can see a beautiful little cottage. This is where the smoke is coming from. It's coming from out of a little chimney perched on top of the little cottage. It's kind of a crooked little cottage but it looks so warm and inviting especially as it's now freezing cold but you're happy and warm inside your thick coat with your extra thick woolly socks on under your boots. As you get closer to the cottage you notice that there are lights on inside it and you wonder who is in there. So you go up to the door and you knock. The door gently opens by itself so you walk inside. There is no one there but you. And you feel so warm, and it feels so very inviting. It's so cosy with the log fire burning. Oh, and you can hear the crackling, and it smells so nice. There are big, squishy sofas and chairs full of soft cushions. And there are candles lit all around the room, making it feel so lovely, so nice and so warm. There is a giant Christmas tree in the corner of the room with lots and lots of presents under it and you wonder who they are for. There is a very winding staircase in another corner of the room. It looks a bit crooked, but it's very strong. You turn back towards the fire and you notice that there is a little table near it. You didn't see it when you first came in, but you do now. And on that table is a letter addressed to you. So you open it and you read what it says. It 
It says that you are very welcome here and you can help yourself to anything that you want. There is hot chocolate steaming away in a cup on the table and a plate full of mince pies and chocolate marshmallows. The letter says you can even have a sleepover if you want to. How exciting is that? So you spend a few moments having a good look around the little cottage, feeling very excited. So just for a moment, go into all of the little rooms and explore and see what's there. You come back to the fire, just as you are about to sit down with your hot chocolate and mince pies, you hear a noise outside. So you get up and go to the door to investigate. What you see outside makes you gasp aloud. What you see is Santa. His sleigh is filled with presents and then you notice there is a very large polar bear standing next to Santa and on his back is a baby polar bear. Oh my! Santa notices you and turns around. He shouts hello to you and waves at you to come over. So you do. You are even more excited than you were before. And it doesn't get much better than this. Santa introduces you to the polar bear, whose name is Fred. The little one on his back, well, he's called George. And George is very shy and just gives you a little smile. Fred the polar bear is not shy at all. In fact, he's a bit loud, but very friendly. Hello, George says in rather a loud voice. And you grin and say hello back. You tell Santa all about the little cottage and what's inside. And Santa informs you that the little cottage is his and it's for very special people just like you. He says you must have been extra good this year to be able to find this place, but he's very glad you did. You realise it's very cold standing outside and the little baby polar bear is shivering a bit, even with his thick fur coat. So Santa says you should all go back inside the cottage and get nice and warm. And once you are inside the cottage, you all take a seat by the fire. Oh, it feels so cosy and so nice. Each of you now has a steaming hot mug of hot chocolate. And the plate of mince pies has gotten very big now, with loads of them on it. And a massive mound of chocolate marshmallows too. Santa, sitting in a big chair by the fire, picks up a book that is on the hearth. It's a Christmas story book, but it's a very special book. It's a very big book too. Santa asks you if you would like to hear a story. And you all say, oh yes, please. So he puts on his glasses, adjusts his beard and begins to read a story to all of you. 
and it's a great story full of exciting things and people and you are really enjoying it then something very special happens you feel yourself being pulled into the book pulled into the story itself how wonderful Fred George and Santa are also pulled into the book where are you where did you go what's it like there so for a few moments be in the story find out what it's about find out where you have gone and who else is there this is a very special Christmas story and you are the main character so go and have some fun for a while and enjoy yourself you may even come back with a present or two You now find yourself back in the room of the little cottage with Santa, Fred and George and you feel amazing. Where did you go in the book? Who did you meet there? Was it fun? And most important of all, did you bring back a present for yourself? Or did you bring back a present for someone special? feel a bit sleepy now, a bit tired after being in the story with Santa, Fred and George. 
So Santa says that you can sleep in the cottage tonight. Fred and George are staying too. Unfortunately, Santa can't stay because it's a very, very busy night for him. And he has a lot of places he must go. And a lot of presents to deliver. And he really doesn't want to be late. Oh yes, you think to yourself, you forgot. It's Christmas Eve. You tell Santa that you really must go home, but Santa says, Don't worry. Don't you worry about that at all, because when you wake up in the morning, you will be in your very own bed. Santa can do this because he's a very special, magical being. Santa puts down the book and takes you all up the winding, creaky old staircase to the bedrooms above. You enter the most amazing bedroom with everything you have ever wanted to have inside it. There are even little tiny fireflies dancing around the room, giving it a wonderful soft glow. There are three big soft beds with the fluffiest quilts and pillows on them, and you dive onto yours. You sink down into it and feel so safe. It's like wrapping yourself in massive hooks, so warm and comfy and cosy. You settle yourself down, and so does Fred and George. George is sleeping with his dad because he's only little and he wants to stay close to him. Santa says he must go now, and you must sleep. You have a big day ahead of you tomorrow, what with all the unwrapping of the presents you're going to have to do. And you'll also get to see all of your family and your friends too, even the ones you don't really want to. Santa says you must be extra kind to the ones you don't want to see because sometimes people are lonely but they just don't tell anyone. Sometimes people are sad so you must be kind to them and help them to be happy again. Santa gives you a great big Santa hug and then leaves the room. You hear him go down the stairs then out of the big front door of the cottage. You then hear the tinkling of the sleigh bells and you get up out of your bed and open the window and peek outside. And you can see Santa sitting on his sleigh and the reindeer have now joined him. You didn't see them before because they were eating their oats and carrots to give them the energy for the long night ahead they have. It's hard work, you know, pulling a sleigh filled full of presents for kids all over the world. Plus, they have a very large Santa to pull to. You watch as the sleigh glides through the sky and off into the distance until you can no longer see it. But you can still hear Santa doing his ho, ho, ho's. And it's still snowing outside, but your room is all warm and cosy. You close your window and you climb back into bed. And as you close your eyes, you wonder to yourself, did that really happen? Did I really just meet Santa? Well, yes, you did just meet Santa and Fred and George too. You look over at Fred and George and they are already asleep and you smile happily to yourself giving a great big sigh of contentment and slowly but surely you drift off to sleep thinking about all the presents you will get to open tomorrow. <laughs>